album's called The Internship EP, and uh, it drops, it'll be available digital and on my website, justas2.me, um, July 20th. Great to meet you, Rocky. Nice to meet you, too. So tell us about you. What, what do you do? Are you just a rapper? Do you do more than that? Uh, yeah, so I guess, um, you know, anything music-related, um, I do work as a producer and I'm a mixer, audio engineer, so anything really heavily involved in the studio, um, I kind of take on that role. But first and foremost, I am a writer and an MC. And uh, that's, yeah, that's where the heart lies, so. Passionate. Yeah. All right, so why do they call you S? So with that name, like back in high school when I was, you know, exploring the whole hip hop scene and starting to build a name for myself, I guess, I was really focused on the idea of having a name that, you know, sounded like a name and not necessarily words put together. So when you have MCs like, you know, Too Short or whatnot, it's their words, right? And then you got another MC like Jay-Z, but that sounds like a name. So um, with that being said, I just kind of took the first letter of my name and I spelled it phonetically. So, you know, S. Nice, nice. Uh, so when you say you've been doing this for since back in school, I'm gonna ask how long have you been doing this? Cause we all left school years ago. So how long has it been now? It has to be, oh man, at least 13 years. 13. I'm going back, yeah, like you know, around the eighth grade, cause that was about the first time I started getting into it. And I think I remember you saying you don't only MC and do all this, but you actually play instruments as well. Yes, that's correct. I have uh, a background in piano and violin. Have you brought any of that into a lot of the producing you're doing now? Yeah, exactly. Um, I do incorporate a lot of those instruments in, in my production. Um, you can, when you, when you listen to the album, you can you know hear that. And uh, anytime, generally, where there's keys, that's me playing on it. But there are exceptions where I've had like some other uh, more polished, you know, um, performers come in and and rock the piano as well but for the most part yeah I'm just sort of doing that and putting strings in you know the background yeah. for doing that as well yeah so who do you look up to in the game past present any artists there's a lot um, but to uh, bring it down to a certain few when I first started really appreciating the culture of hip-hop I was really heavily into Tupac and I still am because Music was about passion, you know, it was about speaking politically and to the people about whatever it was that artist was going through so he could pull them out of the same thing, right, and spread that wisdom. And I really, really dug what Pac had to say in his music because it wasn't just flash, you know. And now, currently, I personally feel there's a lot less people to, to idolize in that respect because Hip hop has become such a commodity. It's become such about flash and bling bling and whatnot. And not to say that we didn't have that back then, but I felt like we had more messages back then. So uh, Pac definitely, Eminem, you know, quite the wordsmith, always has something deep and meaningful to say as well, and doesn't really focus on like how many girls he's banged and you know things like that, right? Because that's not necessarily a relatable issue for the mass audience. That's just a that's more embellishing on a, a fictional and fantasy life that, believe it or not, most people are not gonna live. So, um, yeah, so artists is like Pac, uh, Nas, Eminem, Jay-Z, Biggie, Mortal Technique, I know he's more on the underground side, but he's always been really deep in what he says as well. And um, and even Lauryn Hill, like Miss Education from like, that album. Yeah, she, man. Yeah. yeah, we need her. I know, like that was that was music, yeah. you know, back then, the 90s. I think hip hop always belonged so, in the 90s. So, yeah. We're all our own people. I, mean, I never strive to be anyone else, but is there an artist you can say maybe you can compare yourself to in, in respect? I will say Eminem only because everyone else tells me that. I think you sound like Eminem. <laughs> you have that rugged, raw feel to you, like Eminem. Does. I've always identified with him for many different reasons. You know, being a minority in the hip hop culture, you know, that was always a common um, factor between the both of us. And just 
more than anything else, what I really appreciate about his work is while it's poetic, I always felt like, you know, he, he chooses words that no matter who you are, you'll understand what he's saying. Very true. You know, and sometimes I feel like with a lot of hip-hop artists, it's filled with a lot of, you know, different vernacular, like slang and stuff like that, that's, I feel like it gets lost on some people. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm not really sure what he's talking about mm-hmm. when he uses this word mm-hmm. or that word. And what is it referring to, right? Because I'm not, if you're the next kid who doesn't necessarily grow up in an urban culture, it's just, it's not gonna get to you. And then you may start practicing that word, not quite understanding what it says, right, so. The new album coming out, who we collaborated with on that album? I've collaborated with uh, Junior T from Smash Brothers, and um, I've also collaborated with Nizam, who is uh, also, you know, a Toronto talent, and a couple R&B singers, Sarah Jordan and Chatrice. Do you have a favorite song off the album yet? Would you? I know every artist loves all their songs, but is there right. one that really just sticks out to you? I think if I had to pick. I'd have to go with the song Audi. That song talks a little bit about, you know, just being sick of feeling trapped and just kind of breaking the shackles and then knowing what to do. Because a lot of us at a certain point in our lives, we feel very confused about who we are and we all have like these negative forces that, that hold us back. And maybe they're not intentional negative forces, but that's how we play them over and over in our heads. So the song struggles with rising above some negative forces and just sort of telling the world, you know, just socking it back to them and, and being like, I'm here, I'm ready to take control of my life and move forward. How long has this album been in the works now? It's got to be easily a couple of years, about two years or so. Uh, we went back and it's a, it's a sophomore album, it chronicles, well the first one was called The, the Interview, so this one is that's the second chapter, it's called The Internship, so it basically chronicles my story coming up in the music industry, and so with that being said, we, we went back and we, we focused on making, you know, this, the album itself is darker, and because it deals with a lot more personal issues and just, you know, trying to combat through them. So One yeah. show I definitely want to plug is the album release party. That'll be at Bread and Circus this August 4th. So make sure you're there. August 4th, people. All right. And we'll be sharing the stage with all the other artists from the album as well. So it's going to be a hot party. So who's on the lineup? So we got Junior T, Shatrice, Sarah Jordan, Nizam, and we also have my good friend IDC, who's also going to be um, opening. He wasn't on the album, but man knows how to put a show together, so he's, he's going to be on the bill too. Nice, nice. So you said you had a website. Can you let them know what it is again? Any other search engines or mediums that you use, Twitter? How yeah. can we find S? Um, you can find me at just say s 2me So um, yeah, just, just search that. You'll find me. And uh, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and the whole social media world, YouTube, MySpace. And uh, yeah, you can just plug Just Say S to me on all forums, and you'll find me. And uh, for Facebook, just uh, hit up S Music. I say, um, you know, a big thank you to everybody who helped me put the album together. You know who you are, Jeremy Tanny, Andres Lara, um, my producers, and... Uh, uh, co-producers, mixers, all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, and all the artists who lent their talent to the album, you know, I definitely couldn't have done it without you, so much appreciated. And uh, IC Nation, my DJs, and yeah, you know, the whole team. So like I said, you know who you are, but more importantly to the fans, I really appreciate you standing by me, and I hope you guys will love the album just as much as I do. But uh, definitely something to look forward to. And yeah, make sure you stop at the show at August 4th. So you can catch him on iTunes with the internship. And let's wish him a lot of success. Thanks, S. Thank you. Big up to S, the internship, and everything he's doing. Ow! I have my extensive CD collection, all alphabetized. And as you can see, a chunk of it's still missing. Um, that's because it's scattered all around in the studio. So. Uh, my uh, Tupac book that I got 
as a gift from my, my brother and uh, it contains all his poetry in there a little bit about like you know his biography and then um, actually I got a chance to meet John Lucasamo he is my favorite comedian and he did make this book out to me <laughs> so um, you know we went to go check out a show my brother and I and I uh, had a great chance to meet him this is uh, his book on Eminem that I bought um, actually Actually, no, I didn't buy this. Again, it was a gift from me. All from my brother, actually, you know? He just knows where I stand. So, um, that was uh, a chapter about his life. So, you know, it's just kind of cool to see and read about people who come from really difficult situations and, and make do with what they've got. And, and look, like, you know, they're all legends. They all stand at the top. So, that just goes to show you, no matter what you're working with, it's more than enough. Right? And uh, so... Clearly, I'm a big Eminem fan. This is something I drew back in high school, and these, this is my first. Uh, this was my first keyboard that I got to do all my my music with. Over here, we have my first set of turntables, and as you can see, there's vinyl here. That's when I used to, yeah, you know, DJ. But I left that to pursue production. Um, my old TV. Those are my speakers for my studio. I got two computers. I'm running back here. We do Pro Tools on one, Nuendo on the other when we're recording. And um, those are all the machines, tape decks, CD players, all that stuff, talkback mic. And this is my uh, my piano. It's where I get busy with coming up with uh, compositions and ideas for melodies, you know, and then we put beats together. And uh, walk inside here. This is the, uh, the vocal boot. So here we lay down the vocals and uh, my mic and if we need to, we got the music stand right there so we can, you know artists can put their lyrics on it but as I like to work, memorize and internalize your lyrics because it really shows in your voice when you're reading it. So always know it before coming into the studio and that way like the emotion is that a lot more raw and it's a lot more in touch with uh, what you're about to say. So that's this. And I got one last piece, I almost forgot. Oh, by the way, this is a real, the real machine. They don't have them anymore, but this is my old violin. So this is something that I got when I was 14. If I can even open it. That's right. So there it is. Wow. That's what I first started with. I was uh, five when I first started learning the violin, but this is when I, when I was 14, I got this. So, yeah, all in my blood.